Hi, it's Limitless Lindy here and welcome to week six of my carnival diet and health journey. It's been a really good week. I've been reflecting over the past few years and discovered a few things about myself. Winter is also over here in Melbourne, so I took advantage of the nicer weather and planned a few outings with my daughters. The beautiful Annalise from the channel Me To Marriage reached out to me to offer me some guidance on how to deal with difficult situations. I jumped at the opportunity to add another notch in my tool belt to optimise me. She discussed a protocol she developed called Untherapy, which I found really interesting. We talked for almost three hours and it opened my eyes into the past. One thing that came up was since I was 15 years old, there was always a loved one that needed some caring for. And I was always there by their side, trying to make their life happy, trying to make their life more comfortable and trying to give them hope and some quality of life back. When I was 30, my mother was diagnosed with cancer. And at the same time, my eldest daughter was diagnosed with type one diabetes. For seven years, I was the primary carer for both, all while working my full-time job from home and being a wife and a mum to our youngest daughter. The hardest part was watching my beautiful mother's light fade away. She remained so positive to the end, determined to beat the cancer. Her will to live was so strong, but my daughter fell into such a dark place. The depression was so severe, which in turn impacted on her type 1 diabetes. She would go to school and just hours later, I would receive a phone call saying, Mum, I'm sorry, but I've taken a box of pills and I'm not feeling well. I'd ask where she was and she wouldn't tell me. She would just hang up. I spent so much of my time taking them both to doctor's appointments, therapists, hospital, care facilities. It was, it was such a difficult time. After grieving the loss of my mum, something just snapped in my daughter's head and she turned to a normal, happy, beautiful self again. She decided to move out of home with friends and I was so happy for her. My youngest daughter is very independent and she still is today. And my husband is pretty grounded and settled as well. Suddenly, nobody needed me. I literally had no idea what to do with myself. I felt like I had no purpose. I didn't even know who Lindy was. Anyway, long story short, I threw myself into work and eating comfort food became my crutch. Not a great choice of coping strategy, I know. But at the time, that's all I knew. Annalise suggested I could have been using food to fill that void, making myself larger to fill that hole that was left in my life. That made so much sense to me. I actually broke down and I cried. Another realisation that I had is that with every diet that I tried, I would feel like I'd lost a little bit of weight and my inflammation would improve a little. But the fear of change was so overwhelming. And I would start eating those comfort foods again and spiral back into my safe place. It's a cycle I just couldn't break. You just need to eat a balanced diet. Use your willpower. Be disciplined. Show some restraint. Just do it. Look, I take full responsibility for letting my health get so bad. I knew what I needed to do to turn my life around. But the mental games were debilitating. Healing my mind, my body and my soul had to come first. And the carnival diet gave me the healing that I needed to turn my life around. Just eat meat. Who would have thought those three little words would save my life? I ate the meat. The inflammation in my legs started to reduce and improved my mobility. And this is usually when the fear would set in and I would spiral back to my old ways. But I didn't. I felt like I was in a state of zen. The carnival calm, they call it. And it's real. The carnival calm silenced the noises in my head, allowing me to stop and actually think, I have a choice. I can continue eating meat and getting my life back, or I can listen to that fear and spiral back to my old ways. The carnival calm was a turning point for me. It is so powerful. Feed your mind and your body with a proper human diet, and your body will in turn reward you with a happier, healthier and leaner you. To me, the weight loss was simply a cherry on top. If you'd like to learn more about untherapy, I'd highly recommend you reach out to Annalise. I'll link her details in the comments section below. Thank you, Annalise. I love you lots. Now let's get down to business. Here's a little about my week and some fun NSVs. 
I've been going slow on the treadmill as my hip is still pretty sore. I walk for five minutes twice a day. It's frustrating because I really want to walk more. But I have to take it slow and just trust the process and hope that my hip will improve as I continue to lose weight. So what did I eat? As mentioned, I like to keep things simple. So when at home, I eat one or two meals a day, just depending on how hungry I am on the day. Either steak, ground beef, I roasted a brisket, and we had lamb chops one night, which were really delicious. And we ended the week with salmon as usual. Some days I do include two egg yolks. It just depends how I feel on the day. I did eat out twice this week. We took the girls to our favorite cafe. My husband wanted his chicken parmigiana, so no carnival platter for us today. So I ordered beef cheeks, which seemed to be the cleanest option on the menu. It was served with some broccoli and mashed potatoes. I did give the broccoli to my husband. I wasn't interested in eating that. I did eat some of the mashed potatoes and there was some sauce on the beef cheeks, which was okay. It wasn't an optimal meal, more key to four, I guess, but um, it was delicious and I really enjoyed it. My second outing was with my girlfriend and we went out for brunch. We ordered from the breakfast menu, which is super easy, bacon and eggs with a side of smoked salmon. I normally don't eat breakfast or bacon, so this was a really nice treat for me. My oldest daughter is the owner of a beautiful florist shop in a small country town in Melbourne. She holds workshops on weekends, which I have always wanted to participate in, but I couldn't because I was unable to stand. But last Sunday, I signed up for the large fresh flower bouquet workshop. I had so much fun. We learned how to clean and prepare the flowers and the foliage. We reflexed some roses and wired some gerberas. We were then shown how to start the bouquet. You start with some foliage, then select your flowers and you spiral your stems around the base of the bouquet. They showed us where to place the focal flowers. If there are any little off cuts, we can make a little skirt around the bottom of the bouquet just to fill it out and make it look so pretty. Um, we were shown how to wrap it. They told us a little bit of history about the flowers and some fun and interesting facts. My gosh, the girls make it look so easy. I did struggle a little bit, but I got there in the end and I don't think my bouquet looked too bad at all. The workshop went for an hour, so that was an hour standing on my feet. From where I have come from, that is a huge achievement and I am so, so proud of myself. I will be booking myself in for future workshops, but it's wedding season now, so I think they're slowing down. So um, definitely something to look forward to next year. So my weight today, September 29th, is... 136.2 kilos. My weight has creeped up ever so slightly, but I'm not concerned about it. The only thing I ate off plan was that little bit of mashed potatoes and the sauce that was on the beef cheeks. And I really don't think that impacted on me at all. The warmer weather is starting to set in and that has always been a trigger for my lymphedema. I do feel some minor swelling all over my body and the inflammation in my hip continues to annoy me. So my body still has some healing to do and I, I do have the lymphedema battle ahead of me this summer. So we'll just have to watch and see what happens. Uh, I do know that my condition has improved so much being on the carnivore diet. So um, I am looking forward to summer to see how how this summer compares to my previous summers with lymphedema. So um, I do think I'll be able to manage it a little bit better um, with this way of eating. So I'll definitely um, keep you all posted on that. If I compare week one and week six results on my funky scale, all the numbers are on a downward trend. So that is reassuring. The scale also indicates the optimal range for me for each marker, which I have highlighted in the green column. So I have three green ticks, which is pleasing and definitely something I look forward to working to increase. Just a reminder that you don't need to track. I am purely doing this because I can now. I am not hung up about the numbers. I understand the importance of healing first and I know the weight will come off when it's ready. I'd love to hear about your week. Tell me about your wins and your struggles in the comments below. And here's to another week on our journey of becoming limitless.